Uh, and I think the music might throw my equilibrium off a little bit because I thought I was living in a country where we, you know, where, where liberty had a chance, where fair play had a chance, where we weren't talking about a, a, a GOP, a grand old party, emphasis on old, outdated, dusty, irrelevant, and never ever going to see a dime from people like me ever again. I really thought that we had a chance of some common sense. But no, no, no. Thad Cochran, a 196-year-old fart, won in Mississippi. And how did he do it? Well, he and the GOP took their money, and they courted black Democrats. Now, I have a, I have a question for every black Democrat in Mississippi. What the hell has this 90-year-old fart a white Republican, the same white Republican that for years the geo, the uh, Democrats have been telling you are nothing but old racists. You tell me exactly what Thad Cochran did for you. What the GOP did is they reached out to the black Democrats and got the black Democrats to vote, to come in and vote. So they're much more comfortable with having Democrats come out and vote than having their base come out and vote. And this isn't about Thad Cochran being 137 years old alone. This is also about the people like um, Orrin Hatch, who Orrin Hatch, I used to think, was a good man. I really did. I used to think the guy was a good man, a decent and honorable man, until I had a few meetings with him. And I found how out of touch this man is, how in incomprehensibly out of touch and quite honestly out and out evil at times with the with the things that he does and the things that he does behind the scenes this guy along with um give me the list of them Stu. we had orrin hatch giving money their money for their re-election they took their money to help out thad cochran court democrats yes this here's is, the list uh roger wicker from mississippi lisa murkowski rob portman orrin hatch chuck grassley john barrasso john thune bob corker susan collins john Ke- thune. kelly ayat mm. uh, john D- thune how do you feel about john thune horrible yes. about i feel horrible about him. Mm-hmm. uh dean heller richard shelby john cornyn Lamar uh, Alexander, who, by the way, still has John a primary Corey coming Corey. up. And, of course, your very favorite, Mitch McConnell. Mm. Mm. That's unbelievable. $820,000, Glenn. $820,000. Absolutely mm. unbelievable. Let me ask you something. And I want, I want African Americans clear out the phone lines. I want only African Americans from Mississippi, one that can be extraordinarily specific with me on what this old white Republican has done for you. Tell me exactly. Is it the unemployment rate that is so great for African Americans? Or, or do you give credit for that wonderful African American unemployment rate to the president and the Democrats? I, I want to know which one, because it must be fantastic, because it's got to be so much better than it ever has been, right? It's got to be great for you to go out and, and vote for a white Republican. You either say, no, 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 I recognize how much it sucks to be black and unemployed in America, and so I'm done with the Democrats. I'm going to go over to this new, fresh-faced Republican who's provided even better unemployment rates for us. Is it the living conditions? Does he listen to you? Does he has he called you into his office and said, you know what, uh, this old white guy uh, with the Republican establishment wants to understand you and your community? Is that is that what it is? Because he doesn't even he's never he didn't even know what the Tea Party was. He's not even listening to his own constituents. So how is it exactly he's listening to you? Maybe it's because he has his finger on the pulse of the African-American community, (laughs) and he knows exactly what's going on in Washington as well. Now, let's dismiss the fact that the guy didn't even know that Eric Cantor had lost a week after. Mm. But he's got to be in touch with the African-American community. For that matter, any community, right? I mean, Mm -hmm. is he in touch with any community? His daughter said his opponent relied on silly things like, quote, The Constitution, God, and common sense. Yeah, boy, he's got to be good. Because I I would imagine, you know what it probably is. Did the pastor of your big black church, did your pastor come out and say how great he is? 
because he doesn't rely on the Constitution, God, or common sense, because that's, that's fantastic. It's really fantastic. Mississippi, this is absolutely shameful. It is shameful. I mean, here's a guy who said, well, we did indecent things. Was it indecent things? I want to get yeah, it right. Indecent, it's not indecent things. Indecent things. Oh, it animals. is indecent things. I, mm-hmm. I didn't want to say, I didn't want to say indecent if it was, if it wasn't indecent. He was doing uh, indecent things on the farm to small animals. <laughs> of course, when he was asked about that, he said he doesn't remember saying it, even though it's on tape with him saying it. But I, uh, you know, we said that, you know, I don't think Mississippi knows what, what people do on the farm with indecent animals, uh, you know, being doing an indecent things to animals. But apparently, apparently a good number of uh, the African-American community knows exactly what he was talking about and likes it. <laughs> I have to tell white you, people I, do. last night I saw I mean, I, last night I saw what 40 percent increase, Pat, a 40 percent no. increase in the turnout for African-Americans, African-Americans. I want to know exactly what this man has done that makes you go out and a 40 percent increase in your voting 40. So tell me, there's got to be something that set a fire under your ass. What was it? What was it? Well, you know that uh, like know. old people uh, and uh, those have been around for decades and decades. He was born, I think, in 1785. People with that sort of record in Mississippi, old white people in Mississippi, have sparkling racial records. So I can see why, <laughs> mm-hmm. you know, you would see oh, yeah, so no, many no, African Americans crossing the lines. No, now come on, you would never really seriously. You know, there's no way you would uh, you would um, ever think that an old white guy, 85 years old, uh, it, that is a Republican. In Mississippi, I can't think of a I can't think of a stereotype that the African community. You know what? You, hey, let's look at the good news. You know what this means? This means that race race relations. The King Obama has done it. Race relations are healed mm. because when you can get an old white Southern Republican lighting a fire under people, forty percent increase in African American voting. It's got. We, we've been healed. Everybody go to the ocean and look because the sea level is going to start going down in any, at any moment. Mm. And the amazing, amazing thing here, Glenn, is that not only has it been healed, it's been healed in the last few weeks because none of these people decided to come vote for Thad Cochran initially. They've just all decided in the last few weeks how important he was for the state of Mississippi that they had to turn out yesterday. No, I know, I know. No, I know. And I want to thank Orrin Hatch. Orrin Hatch, let me tell you something. I will live in Utah. I will live in Utah to defeat anyone you put up against Mike Lee. I will li- I will move my family to Utah if I have to. M- uh, I want you to understand, Utah, listen to me very carefully. Orrin Hatch is mounting a campaign with anybody. He could, he could run Thad Cochran, that new young spring chicken, out of uh, Mississippi. It doesn't matter. His attitude is anyone but Mike Lee. Mike Lee is one of the most honorable men I have ever met. Mike Lee is a staunch constitutionalist, and you know Mike Lee's uh, uh, family. You know who that man is. You know how he was raised. You know who his grandfather was. So don't even start with Mike Lee being a bad guy. Mike Lee is a good guy. You are being duped by Orrin Hatch. And I've got to tell you, I've never endorsed anybody. I've never stumped for anybody. I've never campaigned for anybody. But I will for Mike Lee. Orrin Hatch's power has got to come to an end. Orrin Hatch is so incredibly out of touch. When Pat and I sat with him in Salt Lake City... Uh, I don't even know, five years ago, we sat with him in Salt Lake City, and we talked to him about the real problems going on in the country. And do you know what he actually had the balls to say to us? That don't worry about it. He can take care of it, because all he's got to do is run a flag-burning amendment. If he just starts talking about a flag-burning amendment, he'll get all the power, and he'll have everything turned around for us. And we looked at him and said, you're kidding, right? You're kidding. And he said, no, you don't know what that does to people. It stirs them up. A flag-burning amendment was his solution. I actually did think he Please. was kidding when he said that. Yeah, we all looked at each other. No, and we're he, like, he wasn't. What? We looked at each other. No, he, no, was, he was not kidding. No. He was not. He was not. dead serious. No, he wasn't. But to Orrin Hatch, okay, that's so now how Washington works. 
I, I understand that. We now know for sure it is all about power. It is not about principles. It is not about people. Thad Cochran wants power. The Chamber of Commerce, all they want is power. The Chamber of Commerce is the one that is behind Common Core and behind a lot of this, uh, a lot of the GOP. The GOP, it's not a grand old party. It's, it's guardian of power. That's all it is. Guardians of power. But not a power that, you know, that they use to help us, the people. Power that they use to help themselves. Chris McDaniels was about people. He wanted to return power to the people. Thad, Thad, can I ask you an honest question? Don't you have something else better to do with your time? Is there nothing else that you'd like to experience in your waning years? Nothing? Is power that intoxicating that you just cannot step away from it? I mean, it, maybe it could be this is the only way he could stay alive. Breathing in the oxygen of power. That's got to be it. That, that he knows if he leaves power, he will die. It is like the emperor in Star Wars. <laughs> Washington, D.C., hear me clear, clearly. Washington, D.C. is not a place of a representative government anymore. It is a place of aristocracy. That's all it is. George Washington warned us. This is not the Tea Party. This is George Washington. And if you would like to go down and throw George Washington under the bus, go ahead. But I will never do it. George Washington warned us. The two-party system will be the death of us. He warned us. Dwight Eisenhower warned us. What's happening over in, in the Middle East? Did you see the State Department yesterday? The State Department actually laughed when Shepard Smith had the balls to say, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Are you saying that our advisors over in Iraq are ready to fight ISIS, which is exactly what the State Department spokesperson said? She laughed and went, uh, I, you know, no, that's ridiculous. I mean, they know how to defeat them, and so they're going to help. Well, that's exactly the way Vietnam started, and that is exactly, exactly what Dwight Eisenhower warned us. So you have... Dwight Eisenhower warning us about the military-industrial complex, which is real. I used to dismiss it. Don't dismiss it. It is absolutely real. Where the hell is the NSA on the IRS? Where are they? They can track your every single move. They can track everything. But the IRS, the, the, all of a sudden, all of those documents are gone? Really? Dwight Eisenhower was right. George Washington was right. But we allowed ourselves to be seduced. We, we bought it hook, line, and sinker. We bought it, and we wanted it. We wanted to believe. Good luck to you, King Cochran. Good luck. And may you be the last of your type. America, the gig is up. It is really obvious now. They are doing nothing but playing a game, holding on to their power. And, you know, if you know anything about chess, I'm going to talk to you a little bit about chess today. Because it, there's one strategy, the first strategy you, le you learn on chess. Pawns mean nothing. Pawns mean nothing. They can be eaten and taken. It doesn't matter. They're there to block, and that's it. They don't, you can lose them all day long, and you can still win the game. I got news for you, gang. We've been played. We're pawns. Period. Period. Now, what are we going to do? How are we going to change the attitude? How are we going to change things in America? I'll tell you about it coming up in uh, just a second.